Yellow and welcome back to Rift Rivals Day 2. The 5v5s have concluded, but there's still the matter of who is the best in the West. The bot lane gold letter is formatted with each region being divided into two brackets. And gents, it's going to be a fun one. EU versus EU action. Kick it all off as NA's teams will face off against one another until one team's duo is left standing with the teams from EU doing the same. I like how they have set this up. First, we'll determine what the best bottom lane in each region is mm -hmm. before finally coming together to decide best in the West. Oh, yeah. And we're going to be sticking with the same rules that we have had so far throughout the two versus twos. You start at level one, you win by destroying first tower, getting 100 CS or getting two kills. And you can use recall while also being able to heal at the fountain. Outside of that, it's an all hole bars. Let's get some action. Should be certainly a lot of fun. And soon we will have the Commissioner Greeley and Rift Rivals Chaplain Romain bringing out the best in the West belts. Yeah, before then though, chatting a little bit. Uh, there they go. The belts are ready. Pretty badass, if I don't say so oh, myself. Oh, yeah, they look they real good. Cool. I mean, again, all about the bragging rights here. Who doesn't want to be called the best in the West bot lane? I have also been informed the winning team gets to keep those forever. They're dated. This is 2018. Damn. And you'll never have to give them up. But you guys can't keep them. Remain, put it down. Remain, <laughs> remain it's not yours. Put it down. All right, let's check out the lineups over here. Game one is on the EU side of the bracket, kicking things off for G2. It's Hyonin and Wadid. Oof, the powerhouse bot lane of Europe. Currently sitting in a 6-0 and zero record on the European LCS without playing a single AD carry. <laughs> They're trying to prove that AD carries are weak and it's the future of the mages. And for Spice here, it's Kobe and Kasing. In maybe a struggling tournament for them, but can still pull out some fun They won stuff. their last two versus That's two. True. They have some creative strats planned, and I was talking to Kobe this morning. He was like, you know what? I still think we can win. We can still do Europe proud. And even if we struggle in groups, we can make up for it here. Yeah, I'm 100% rooting for Kabe, my namesake. He's really done me <laughs> proud in the marksman role. Uh, and, and I asked him if he was going to dumpster this dirty Heimer player. They said it's going to be banned, for <laughs> sure. <laughs> so a little insight into the pick and ban phase. Surprising, they may target Hyarnin. Well, we'll see exactly what we have here. But first ban is Zillion for G2. What a prediction! Whoa! Oh! With the Heimerdinger. Didn't even make you wait for it. Zillion being thrown towards Kasing. He does love that champion. He played a lot last split. Yeah, I, I also really like how this, even though this is best bottom lane in the West, the goals of this are so different from your goals on Summoner's Rift. Yeah. And all of these players, everyone that I've talked to is like, yes, we're going for the 2v2 kills, 100%. <laughs> There's no junglers, so it's all about what type of you know kill lane can you try and whoa, get. Whoa, whoa. Bwipo and Hillisang are currently the most active bot lane duo in Europe. They uh -huh. love to go for kills, so in theory, this should be their pride and joy, but we do know that there have been a couple of unique strategies that have come out all across the board, and G2 feels like they already have a plan in mind. Oh, baby, no hesitation here. Now, we've seen Talia already, you know, in Summoner's Rift on competitive games be very effective with anything with a stun to set up the seismic shove. Uh, Brand can do that, but his isn't the most reliable no. uh, first stun to set things up. Usually he wants a targeted one to set him up as well. So interesting, who's going to be able to land the first bit of CC here? But I'm pretty sure that so far in the 2v2s, Talia actually has a 100% loss rate because uh, it's really hard to make use of the work round that takes up so much space. Also, there are like a lot of minions in ARAM and you can just hide behind them for a really long time to mitigate a lot of her damage. So while I love the brand, I'm still not entirely sold on the Talia just yet. And if Splice do lock in this combo, I think it's a bit better as far as the setup we talked about. Syndra stun, very quick uh, in comparison to Talia's seismic shove. So she can actually set up the brand here uh, and Kasing to be able to follow up on that one and look for the chain kills. Plus, they do have a bit better pushing. The Talia you mentioned having 0% win rate in 2v2 so far. Some of the nerfs for this patch, 813 with the micro patch, were to lengthening the cooldown on the early levels yeah. of her threaded volley. Well, I saw Hyonin's reaction when the champions were revealed. Brad <laughs> battles there between him and Kasing, but Talia versus Syndra kind of the difference maker there. But it has been fun so far. Again, side selection 2v2s have been nice to watch, but they don't necessarily have the same weight that we will now witness. Yeah, this around. is a battle for a title, Pastry. And you get a belt. belt. Yeah, you get a belt, you get a title, you get to walk away from this tournament feeling proud of, if nothing else, you know, even if your region loses, you can walk away as the champions of something. You know, for too long, Sven and Miffy were called best in the West, double lift and Ole, you know, like, nah, 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 this is the title, this is your opportunity to finally prove it and claim yourself as the best in the West bot lane.
Well, teams and players are lining up. You can see they're on your screen, the belts that are on the line, but you must unfortunately slay some of your fellow regional brethren as the teams will move out onto the Howling Abyss. This is going to be fun. I hope you boys are ready to track a lot of brand cooldowns. Yeah, I'm pretty excited. Already we do see some difference in the strategy here. Double airy for Splice. Uh, they just want to get as many short trades off, tag someone with an ability uh, to get airy over there for some damage. Whereas the Comet and Electrocute for G2, again, they're relying so much more on the skill uh, of being able to you know, land these skill shots as well as slow someone down to try and get the confirmation on the extra damage. And it seems like it will be a little bit more difficult, but there we go. First damage dealt. Kobe two for two so far on Dark Spheres, but Hyanan answering back as you can see kind of the idea behind Talia level one very early when all your ground isn't worked or overworked can do a lot of damage early on. Right now it is Chi-Chi's bot lane. They get priority on the wave. That means that they're looking to get that early level two try and get the level advantage, then force a couple of plays. Uh, I do believe Hyanin started with the W on the, uh, the yeah. brand, whereas Kasing started off with the Q. So both of them will likely be setting up for the stun once they hit that level 2 mark, and then the same will be done for the Syndrome. That's the thing that Chicho have to be really careful of, as you were talking about earlier, Kobe. The setup is just so strong from the Syndra brand duo. Yeah, Syndra still yet to put a point in the W for the slow. He's got Q early on for CSing here with the low cooldown, because uh, they don't want to fall too far behind in CS early on as G2 are pushing into the turret. Yeah, it's looking good so far, but there's level 2 ding on both sides now. Gonna give them a little bit more options. She does go for the stun second here for Kabe. So, again, that setup where you get the Syndra stun uh -huh. into the brand chain is a possibility. Also remember, as they're CSing under the turret, they do different uh, amounts of damage to minions here than they do on Summoner's Rift, so it is definitely much more difficult. Until you get used to it, and then they're like, oh, it only takes me a one shot on the... Uh, the the other thing that's different as well is that cannon minions... I oh! oh! They already got the first CC ignite down, Hyanin. Gets top by Aerie, but actually not enough to get a Ooh. kill there. That's a big miss for Splice. Yeah, that's a lot of summoner spells used as well. Flash traded for two flashes on the side of Splice. Means that kill pressure going to be heavily mitigated in G2. They could look to punish this as the laning phase progresses, but Splice now hitting the level three, they can go back to base, buy some items. Yeah, and we did see early boots pick up here from Yarnan after he escaped with his life. That will help you dodge some of the skill shots, but again, Syndra Stun comes out so quick, even with the boots pickup, that same thing could be, um, you know, what they're going for next time, and Yarnin won't have the flash for number two. Also see that Kobe has made that back, like you were mentioning, Vedius, these decent cannon waves can make it quite different on when those timings are, but uh, Kasing has not gone back yet, although that's cute. Some biscuits just got delivered to the Splice duo, so uh, gonna have a bit more sustain here. Yeah, we don't have full information on all the minor runes that they have chosen, but the Biscuit delivery should be uh, seen quite a lot in this tournament, uh, especially since they're trying to get all the sustain for the lane dominance and not give up experience with their recalls. Also, the purchase here, you can see Syndra going for just more combat power with the Doran's Ring uh, rather than, you know, the move speed that we saw on G2 side. Everyone again just kind of hanging back. Indeed. Looking pretty strong there at level 4 now, but once again, teams are just kind of happy to trade farm for now. G2, in that respect, are ahead by a few. Tension begins to mount between the two European squads. And uh, ooh, that is a stun that lands, but no follow-up. Okay. It's just a couple of blows being traded back and forth. Yeah, so waiting for those summoners to come back up. Individual good shots there from G2. Uh, while we keep mentioning how Splice can set each other up, G2 just straight land theirs outright, so a little bit of harassment there. And they are ahead on minions right now. Even though we believe both teams are looking for the kills, uh, the minions are going to be important to track. Yeah, it's one of those things. Where if, you know, if you're getting close to that point, mm -hmm. you'll probably just take that win. A lot of the times, they look for kills in the beginning, and if it gets to the point where they're closing yeah. in on 100, then it's just the pressure of this team has to be the ones to force the fight, uh, you know, or else they do lose out on default by the 100 CS rule. It does seem like, again, teams are kind of taking their backs. G2 again have stocked back up. Boots on both now, plus double Dorans. Feeling pretty healthy, especially with that CS lead. We actually might get a 2 for 2 finally in the tournament where we actually see some level 6s as well, which we have not seen yet. Obviously, Brandon and Syndra have a bit of an advantage there. Oh, they certainly do. 
what did though. Could he use his ultimate to perhaps separate off the two? Perhaps kind of set up a sneaky play like that. You can also go back to base and use it to get back to lane super quickly. Note that Kasting actually hasn't spent any of his gold yet, so that G2 do have an item advantage, which they could look to try and leverage. He's gonna go back. Probably now's the best time. Oh, oh Bobby though does get caught, pops the barrier, but low on mana burning down. Oh, he's for the brand passive and he gets first blood, but Hyanin. Still gonna take some, it's not enough Ooh. to kill him again. Close, but doesn't count unless you finish it off. Even the airy, not enough. And it is G2, ahead in minions and ahead in kills now. Also getting ahead in turret damage. Remember, that's the other way you can win the 2v2. But Kasing finally gets his back in boots and a second door into himself. Kobe does have an amp term and a few more potions, so maybe gonna feel a bit more healthy, but this is where it gets tricky because you're down in minions, your turret's taking damage, and you can no longer afford to make a mistake where one of you gets killed because you instantly lose the game from that point. Big thing that is a pro for Splice, though, because of the Syndra pick instead of Talia at level six, you gain very, very explosive power with the Syndra ult, and that could be a possibility to try and collect two kills at once. You do an ult early, get the balls on the ground, then you go for the stun and try and get both of them at once with the same stun. Yeah, Tiana can get here. Actually does need to pick up a lot of these minions to kind of keep that condition alive. We did also went back to base. Uh, someone has a refillable, so apparently thinking that's going to go a little longer than they might expect. But Wadid did hold on to his ultimate for what it's worth. Level sixes have now been reached all across the board. Summoner spell still on cooldown, and a stun doesn't quite land from the side of Kobe. Uh, G2 kind of in a better position, given that they do have the heal available on Wadid, but then there is the ignite as well on Kasing. I always question whether or not that's a good idea on champions like Brand and Syndra, because mm -hmm. usually in solo queue, you can never actually get in range to use your ignite. Usually, you don't want to be that close, but here's the cutoff. Hmm. So he actually did take the wall. I was thinking he might uh, forego taking the wall, and just put another point uh, in a basic ability there for some extra damage. Sometimes you can use the wall creatively if you're closing in on the 100 CS or, or tower damage, but not right there. It does feel like teams are waiting for summoners to come back up. Cannon's Ignite still on cooldown. Kobe's barrier not too far away. G2 recognizes that they probably have to get a base in if they can afford it. Wadi does go back. He's very quick back to the lane. And again, I think at this point, G2 might actually be settling in to farm it out. Yeah, so Spy should actually let the wave push right now because there's a cannon going against non-cannon, which means that they can close that CS gap just a little bit. Uh, and then once the cannon spawns on their end, that's when they need to look to start being super aggressive, try and force summon a spell, try and sacrifice loads of farm to the turret if they want to try and close this gap between them that is pretty significant at this point in the game. Also might find a good opening for that all-in that we're really expecting from Brand Syndra. But I think again, Kobe still a few more seconds left on barrier. Then we might see something started. Keanu will not have Ignite for 10, 15 seconds, it feels like. I'm excited, though, with all the flashes back up. I mean, whoever gets killed first is probably going to be due to flashing over the stun or being hit by the stun. That's the big difference. It. Yeah, there's a hit on Zikahana, but he does flash away. Ult out from Kobe, but now he's actually forced to run away. Pyrocosm bouncing back and forth. He's going to take his relic and be OK. It's two low mages, but no one dead. Oof, all ultimates have been used here, so no surprises left. And still, G2 hold the CS lead, and they haven't lost a member. Depending on how this goes, though, but he's going to have to last it very well from this spot to keep that lead. He actually gets stunned, might get picked off here. Not enough. That's a lot of farm, though. Like. There's, <laughs> G2 are not that far from the 100 uh, We're getting right close. <laughs> All right, so I think at this point, Splice going back. Oh my god, Kobe has a need to sleep much run that he did. All right, so I think the plan's pretty clear now for Splice. You probably aren't going to get the turret. You probably can't catch up in 10 CS time. It's time for a really desperate all-in. All right, there's six right here. Hyarnin actually misses one. Next wave. They have to do it next wave, otherwise the game is over, 100%. All right, definitely a telegraphed all-in, but can they do anything about it? No ultimates are available for either side. Seems like this is going to be very tough for Splice to work their way out of it. You're going to have to start going basically as soon as that wave starts showing, though. So again, you can see Splice, they're trying to bide their time. There's a cannon minion wave as well. Oh, there's the stun. I mean, Syndra doing a lot of damage. Good stun. This might be one kill. They need at least the first one. But the stun lands in. Kobe's in tower range. He pops the barrier. Five CS is the count currently, too. Well, did just has to wait for the wave to hit the tower. Well, they could try and pressure him off, but he's going for it. There's two. Yep. Only need three more. Now the stun does land, but I mean, Kobe can't go under the turret. 
Because he's trying to keep him off. We did. He needs to find a couple of minions to it, snipe. His worked ground is all around the turret wait, 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 already. Look at the farm for splice. Look at the farm for splice. Oh, it's six away. They don't have enough. They need to wait for the wave. How patient here. can they be? They're trying to keep them off the wave. Three away. Oh, Yarn Yarn is is oh no. Oh, no. Someone dies. They think it's oh, so oh, 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 He gets the kill incredibly tense. <laughs> I like the positioning. They knew they had no time to work with, trying to force out the last few. But G2, in the end, get the extra kill. Damn, that was close. You know, you can see that Spice were kind of forced into this corner where they had to just zone them away from the farm. And uh, unfortunately, yeah, especially given that they'd already lost one kill earlier on, uh, it was definitely an uphill struggle for Spice. And many of the all-ins they tried didn't quite work out. Yeah. This was, this was where it really got intense, too. Once you start to count the CS, only a few more coming on the minion wave, but Yarnin is on the way back, and the savior for G2 arrives. And it's all easy from there, Pyroclasm, and that's basically yeah. just <laughs> it. Outskilled. Oh. That maybe they shouldn't have even tried to go for the all-in, just because the problem is he also drew tower aggro, so if you just yeah. immediately gone for the wave and then tried to get those last couple of CS, maybe that could have been the way they turned it around, but either way, Spice end up dropping. G2 will be going up against Fnatic next. Well, not for now. That was quite a fun one to keep things off, but the first matchup on the NA side is...